Hi, in this video tutorial we are going to be continuing the work that we did in the previous tutorial on a two-asset portfolio. In the last tutorial we created a portfolio made up of 50% Macy's stock and 50% of our funds were invested in Johnson & Johnson. Based on that, over the last 10-year period, we calculated that we would have received an average annual return of 14.46% and we would have had a standard deviation um, equal to 33.5%, which is a tremendous amount of variability. Um, in other words, we might have averaged 14%, but we would have had returns as high as 87% and we would have had losses of 20%. So it's not very predictable, otherwise known as it's being a lot of risky. It's being very risky. There is a lot of risk. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to see how the variance, the standard deviation, and the mean return or the average return uh, would have varied, it would have been different had we invested a proportion of our funds in a different allocation percentage other than 50-50. I'm going to scroll up. So we're going to look at the proportion of our funds invested in Macy's, and we're going to range that from 0% up to 100%. And then we're going to calculate our variance, our standard deviation, and our portfolio mean return under these different scenarios. So where we're going to start is looking at the variance. You probably remember variance from your statistics class. Um, the formula is fairly complicated, but you'll just need to know it mechanically and to understand what variance means. So to get our variance, Part of the variance of our portfolio is going to come from our stock in Macy's, and part of it's going to come from our stock in Johnson & Johnson. So to calculate our variance, we say that our variance is equal to the percentage of the stock invested, invested in Macy's, and we're going to square that. And then we're going to multiply that by Macy's variance. I'm going to give that an absolute reference so that I can carry this formula down. So that's the variance that comes from Macy's. The part that comes from Johnson & Johnson is equal to the portion of our stock, the percentage of the funds invested in Johnson & Johnson. We don't have that, but we know if 0% is in Macy's, then 1 minus 0%, 1 minus the contents of cell A31, is invested in Johnson & Johnson. So we'll square that. And then we'll multiply that by the Johnson & Johnson variance, given an absolute reference. We'll finish the equation by adding 2 times the weight in Macy's, A31, times the weight in Johnson & Johnson, 1 minus A31, times the covariance of the two stocks. And our portfolio variance with 0% in Macy's and 100% in Johnson & Johnson is equal to 3.04%, the same variance in Johnson & Johnson. So what I need to do is to check here to make sure that I have all of the absolute references that I needed. I want to make sure that both variances, C25 and B25, are absolute reference as well as the covariance, and I need an absolute reference there. Having done that, I can simply drag my formula down. So standard deviation, as you may remember from your statistics class, is equal to the square root of portfolio variance. And so in order to get the standard deviation of the portfolio, we just enter the function equals square root, and it's the square root of the portfolio variance. Our standard deviation is 17.44% if we have 0% stock in Macy's. And that makes sense, because if we have 100% stock in Johnson & Johnson, our portfolio standard deviation is going to equal the standard deviation of Johnson & Johnson over the 10 years. I can click this in the corner, and it'll all be pulled down. And I can look that if we have 100% invested in Macy's, the variance is going to be equal to Macy's variance, and my standard deviation is going to be equal to Macy's standard deviation. You want to run those numbers, check that in your mind, and look at the spreadsheet to make sure your numbers came out correctly. So as you remember from the other tutorial, the portfolio return is going to be equal to a weighted average of the individual stock's returns that are held in that portfolio. So our return is going to be equal to the percentage of our funds or of our investment that's held in Macy's multiplied by Macy's return. And then there's going to be part of that return that comes from Johnson & Johnson. 
the proportion of that return is going to be related to the amount that we have, the amount of stock that we have, which is 1 minus A31, right? What we don't have in Macy's, we have it in Johnson & Johnson, and we can multiply that by Johnson & Johnson's returns. So if I want to be able to drag this formula down, which I do, I need to give both Macy's and Johnson & Johnson's returns absolute references. Make sure that we're formatted correctly. Percentages with two decimals. With 0% in Macy's, 100% in Johnson & Johnson, our mean return is going to equal our return in Johnson & Johnson that we calculated in the last tutorial. Now if I just drag this down, we'll see that if we have 100% in Macy's, our portfolio mean return is going to be equal to the mean return in Macy's. So that is our check to know that we've done the math correctly. And what we want to see is that is a relationship that we would expect, is that in order to earn a greater return, we have to take on more risk. So the question comes up, which is a better stock, Johnson & Johnson or Macy's? And the question depends on your desire to avoid or assume risk in order to have more return. We want more return for more risk, and in this case we would get it. So your decision about which stock is better is based upon um, your preference for risk.